Are you an investor looking for premium market opportunities? Presenting premium and exclusive service for investors by Calcum. Hello, welcome to another edition of Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. My name's Sage. So glad you could join us today. Is connecting with the masses an art or a science? A big question to, show, to start the show with because today's guests are pretty big. They're from Nova Entertainment, the financial experts. Fear and Greed's Michael Thompson and Sugar Mama TV's Canna Campbell, the current hosts of Nova's podcast. How do they afford that? Canna and Michael team up tapping into the collective unconscious, playing on those core emotions in relation to finances, budgeting, family, super, you know, all that stuff that requires simple life hacks to gain more control of your finances. So here to tell us more about what they do, we have Canna Campbell and Michael Thompson. Welcome to the show. Lovely to chat with you. So great to connect with you. And I listened to today's or this week's podcast and Michael mentioned his aptitude to the mechanics of compounding interest, which is brilliant because it's well above my head. Is interest in our savings accounts compounded and how important is it for people to prioritise saving money really? Absolutely. I think more than ever before, people are really interested in creating financial wellness in their lives. They want to see more financial harmony in their lives. They want to know that you know they're saving money in the right way. They're making the most of their money and actually going one step beyond that, but also looking at getting their money to work for them through investing. So it's a really exciting change that's going on. And we live in a capitalist society where money is obviously valued. Like you mentioned, investing is really important, saving is really important. We're constantly thinking about it, even when we're not thinking about it. It's probably stirring the subconscious emotions within us. Guilt, pride, love, regret. Does budgeting on the apps really work? And what are some hacks people can apply to save more? Absolutely. Look, there are lots and lots of different apps out there. The uh, ASIC has a money smart uh, budgeting app, which I believe is brilliant and extremely popular, but uh, any app is only going to work for you if you use it in the right way and you use it responsibly and also it's the right type of app. So there are many, many different ways of budgeting your money. So you need to find one that works for you and your cash flow and your spending requirements. And that might be one that's, you know, proactively tells you where to spend your money or it might be one that you enter in your expenses on the spot, on the go or it might be one that you enter in all your expenses at the end of the week or at the end of the month. Whichever one works for you and helps you manage your money better and helps you achieve your goals is the right one for you. But you've got to actually put all the right information into it in the first place and use it on a regular basis responsibly for it to really work. However, if you're not an app person, that's perfectly fine. You can actually manage your money yourself just using very simple accounting systems where you allocate money into certain accounts such as emergency money and you stockpile your money in preparation for expensive times of the year such as Christmas or those car regos and CTPs. It, it is very easy to manage your money if you just have some, a few key insights as to what works best for you and your living expenses. Thank you so much. Basically that emergency you know stash that you're talking about that's it's so important at times like these is interest rates the RBA keeps putting up. They're sky high at the moment. The supply chain issues have increased prices, you know, at the Bowser, at the checkout. Where are families noticing the increases the most in your opinion? The list is very long. We are seeing it everywhere in all sorts of walks of life in our, in our everyday living expenses. And families in particular are really feeling the squeeze. It's putting a lot of stress and pressure. So. Our podcast is all about helping people understand how to manage their money in a better way, a more efficient way, and a proactive way, but doing it in a light, fun, engaging, empowering way. That's right, because I mean, you know, if you go to the specials section at the supermarket, what if someone sees you? You know, are they going to be thinking, oh, there she is buying a special. Maybe things must be really tough for her. But I think, you know, do you have any tips for that? Can you wear a disguise when you go there? What, what do you think people should be feeling when they're being thrifty? Look, I think being smart with your money, being mindful with your money and being 
intelligent, educated, and informed is is sexy. We should be we should be respectful of the flow of money in our lives. There is no shame for being frugal. There is no shame for spending your money that's in positive alignment with your value system. So I say stand at the special section, you know, the the two dollar shop, um, all you know, the Costco's, all those great you know discount places. Own it, and it's going to mean that you have more money in your bank account, which potentially can mean more money for investing, more money to put towards retirement planning, uh, emergency money, and all those lifestyle goals such as holidays and renovations and, you know, the things that are important to us that allow us to really embrace life. That's great. Now, the long-term goals you've mentioned there, retirement, holidays, children's education, things like that. What do you think should take our priority, short-term goals or long-term goals? Look, I'm a big fan of taking one big goal and actually working backwards by making lots of small, bite-sized, mini and manageable and therefore achievable mini goals that are positively aligned to that big one scary goal, you could say. So I think um, my focus is always been like lots of little goals along the way. So if you have a goal to save, say, save $10,000 for emergency money, well, then you start by maybe saving $100 a week and then slowly and steadily as you get better at that and create really good habits and awareness with money and you become more efficient in managing your money and more educated and informed, you can then maybe bump it up to $120 a week saving so that you can actually start getting there and achieve that goal sooner and sooner and before you know it, you tick that goal off and then can move on to the next step beyond emergency money. Thank you. I love your YouTube channel, Sugar Mama TV. It's so awesome. And in this week's podcast, you mentioned um, your love language is snacking. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh, it's it's dangerous. But I do make a lot of snacks at home. I make a brilliant banana bread and um, I put a few sneaky frozen berries, which are also financially friendly. And if I'm feeling naughty, which is most of the time, some um, chocolate chips as well. <laughs> I'll have to send you some. Oh, please do. I mean, the circular economy, the shared economy, sharing snacks would be a lovely way to still have fun while saving money. And these things are becoming more and more important, especially as people and consumers are thinking about their carbon footprint because the consumer economy isn't great for, you know, the climate. We're constantly consuming, constantly manufacturing. So there's things like Absolutely. ride sharing, co-working, sharing Netflix passwords. How else can people still enjoy themselves without spending loads of money? Look, I think it's about factoring into your budget the balance. So if whatever is important to you and works with your value system. So, you know, having experiences in there, such as maybe you get a massage once every three months or you buy something in a nice result where you treat yourself out to a beautiful meal with a friend. It's all about making sure that it fits within your values, fits within the budget, and also it, you're working towards some sort of financial goal in your life, whether it be getting out of debt, building up savings, building passive income streams, preparing for retirement. You, I really do believe you can have the best of both worlds. You can be responsible with money, respectful with money, but you can also enjoy you know, the, the richness of all your hard work and, and those fruits from all the hard work. So true. And thoughts are going to the people at Amy and the other insurance companies at the moment who are probably being inundated with calls because of the bad weather and the effects of climate change. I believe they're one of your sponsors. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, how do you afford that? It is proudly sponsored by Amy, um, which is an absolute honour um, to, to be able to work with them. Well, thank you, Kenna, for sharing your insights. We are honoured that you have joined us on our Experts Talk show. Best of luck with your podcast. Thank you so much and thank you for having us. Have a wonderful day. And if you just joined us, we just had the most interesting discussion with Nova Entertainment's financial expert, Kenna Campbell. Please watch the full episode on Calkine Media's YouTube channel to find out more about their new podcast, How Do They Afford That? Keep watching for more of these expert talks and market insights. Till the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media.